Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna show you how to draw a pitchfork. So grab your pencils and let's get drawing. The first thing you're gonna note is that we're gonna draw a four-pronged pitchfork. It's really just gonna be um, something like this. So we're gonna have the main uh, base over here. And I'm gonna use my ruler to make this as realistic as possible. Um, just a nice parallel shaped piece. Just like that, that's gonna be the base. Um, we'll probably draw some sort of end piece like this. Okay. And at the top, what we're gonna do is a four pronged piece. So we're gonna go this way. We are gonna go this way. And the trick is to keep this as flat as possible. Um, so, try to keep it even flatter than what I started out with over there. Okay. So if you didn't know, pitchforks have been around since the Middle Ages. Um, and even back then they were used as a weapon as well. So the word pitchfork actually comes from um, to toss or to throw, which is the meaning of pitch. And then fork from the old English, um, like forked instrument or weapon. So. Kind of like throw a weapon, throw a weapon. That's kind of like where it came from, right? Um, so now I'll tell you some more facts, but let me just draw the outer prongs over here. We're basically just gonna draw one over here and one over here. Make sure that your curvature is still um, showing well. The left one was fine, this one was a little too too close, so I just wanted to correct that. Okay. Um, we're gonna have like the ever so slightest little point on each of these tips, just like that. And then we're actually gonna follow this point back down. Um, the line down isn't necessarily um, parallel, if you will, but it is um, very close to being parallel, so keep that in mind. The second piece will probably go up like this, and we'll just make sure that we're, we're pretty in line being symmetrical, so um, the third piece will be over here. And let's just make sure that we're looking pretty good in terms of the fourth piece. So I would just like lightly put on your lines and then have a look and kind of see how they look. Do they look kind of, you know, equally distant or equidistant, if you will? I was originally going to make this a, a bottom flat pitchfork, but I kind of like the, the, the way that we kind of made it like a V-shaped pitchfork over here. So I'm just actually going to pivot and change that as well and just make it more like a V shape like I did over here, okay? So the other thing is I wanna make this just a little bit longer, and in doing so, I might um, extend this up just a little bit as well. So you can see just, just making these a little longer actually does make it look a little more realistic as well. Um, I just felt like it was a little too short, so uh, just doing that. So the pitchfork was first used in the Middle Ages, and um, so some made entirely of wood, and typically this part was, would be made out of metal in, in more recent times. So keep that in mind as well. So we'll add on these little points over here. The last one is just a touch too tall, so what I want to do is just maybe back it up just a tiny bit, okay? Great. So the other thing to note is, uh, like I said, this part in this case is gonna be 
kind of made out of metal. Um, so we'll kind of make that a little darker in shade and tone. And this part made out of wood. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of like, we'll separate the two and make them look different on purpose, okay? So we'll add our shading onto this piece over here. Start out with your outer lines and make sure that they, um, they kind of transfer well and, you know, in, in a somewhat of a uniform way. Harder to do when you have such a short, like, width space up here, but easier to do at the base because um, with the base down here, you can have the shading, like, darker at the edges and then just a little bit lighter as you move away from the edges. We've done that in many videos before. Um, that is tougher to do as you get into the thinner spots. So watch as I do that. So I'm going to keep doing that and I'll just tell you that, like I said, the pitchfork is basically very um, symbolic. It's a very symbolic item, the pitchfork. And um, often sometimes referred to as a, as a trident in Greek mythology. I, I guess the trident has three forks, this one has four. But um, so in Greek mythology, the, the pitchfork is also referred to as a trident. And then in, in a lot of times, in a lot of historical um, references, it was the symbol of the mighty Poseidon, the god of the sea. And in Christianity, the pitchfork came to be associated with the devil and, uh, and like wicked activity, as they would call it. So I, I believe that's more of the three-pronged pitchfork. But in this case, we're doing a four-pronged pitchfork. But it's kind of the same um, premise, if you will, right? I believe sometimes the, the four-pronged pitchfork has also been used in like farming activity as well. So anyway, we're going to keep... Uh, doing the shading over here. So in an effort to make this look as realistic as possible, just do some darker shading right at the base. And that's what I'm doing right here. And then what we'll do is we'll just continue up on each of these forks with some shading as well. So we did uh, the shading in a rough way. Just clean it up, make sure that you didn't go maybe a little too wide, like that was a little too wide at the top for me. So I just wanted to clean that up. Um, so all good there. And then I would say is the base of the pitchfork, what you can do is just, we want to create like a bit of a 3D effect. So you can create your lines that just make this look a little more like it's been uh, created into um, a round handle, right? That's really what we're drawing here. So just basically work on the left side, have your lines pull up, if you will, just kind of pull up like this. And then I think what we'll do is we'll actually use our shading technique to just have some of the colors bleed on to the space. So I'm very carefully just going to go up and down like this, trying not to smudge off of the, the piece itself, but it is hard to do. And then I might just add the ever so slightest bit of color not color, sorry, um, shading on the other side. And then do that perhaps one more time up and down. So that just gives that a bit more of a 3D effect. But notice that I went lighter. I purposely kept um, the handle lighter than the actual metal piece above. The metal piece is darker because, it's, of course, it's made out of metal and all that. But, um, but certainly... Um, certainly want to keep that in mind, okay? I would say that in order to finish this off, get a nice sharp pencil and just make sure that your, um, your drawing has a nice fine edge because in real life, like a real pitchfork is gonna have some nice fine uh, lines and you don't really want them to be too loose and too, um, 
ambiguous, right? You really want these to be clear and see how clear I'm making that piece right there. I'm going to do the same over here. And the last one as well. So I would say that's pretty much it. That's really, for the most part, how you draw like a four-pronged pitchfork. You could extend these just a little bit taller and longer. Um, it might make it look more like a, like a pitchfork pitchfork, like where you have these kind of long, jagged points at the top. Um, if you want, you could do that. I'm, I'm just going to do that anyway just to maybe clean up some of the lines. I've got my sharp pencil out anyway, so you know, I might as well just uh, just continue on some of these finer lines. So that's all I really did right there. The other reason you might want to pull up some of those pointy tips is because you might want to make sure that these are all on the same line. It looks a lot more like it's it's been built that way. It's been created that way, right? So I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and the interesting facts about pitchforks. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.